Hey everyone, you might recognize me and Eric here from the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I just want to let you know before you get into this segment that this merchandise you see on our shirts and on our cups and on anything else you ever see with Nintendo Prime branding on it, you can get in the description below. You can also get the full audio podcast not segmented in the description below. And if you would like early access to our podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio podcast. And Mr. Eric, what do you get for $20 a month? Ooh, you get to join us on a podcast. That is right. So... If you would like to ever be on the Nintendo Pride Podcast, get your voice in front of thousands of other Nintendo fans out there. You know what to do. Hit up that $20 tier on Patreon. Anyways, folks, on to the episode. So, we're going to move on then to our second topic. Uh, again, if you're wondering why we're not going to just keep talking about Odyssey, is I do want to revisit Odyssey again. I don't know if it'll be next week or the week after. Uh, when I've beaten everything, or as much as I'm willing to say, like if when I hit a point that I've either 100% the game or I'm d- I'm just done playing. Um, you know, I hit mm. like 600, 700 moons and maybe I'm just done. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe. And then obviously I'll, I'll get Fadjay back on, who's who's well on his way to do, to that kind of accomplishment. Uh, hopefully Eric at that point will see if he can find some enough time to, to do that. But I know Eric, like if he can get like a weekend day and just sit down and do it, like, oh my God, he loves Mario. Mm-hmm. Like, at least complete the story. Bare yeah. minimum. Yeah. Um, it's worth it. And I'll probably, you know, maybe see if I can get one on that. So we have a full four person panel, um, kind of giving our final verdicts on it. Uh, I'm not going to call it a review because uh, I don't, it, it'll, it'll just be a final impressions kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. And that's where we can answer the question because I I know a lot of people are thinking it now. Nate, do you think this game is better than Breath of the Wild? Uh, and it's one of those questions that I'm not going to answer until I at least get as far into the game as I have gotten into Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's a little bit unfair too. It's an apples and oranges. It is. Well, I mean, that's just that's the way fans are. Yep. It's which game do you like better? Is the better question. And, and I can, I mean prefer? I can tell you guys I've been. Like Zelda is my favorite franchise, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Breath of the Wild is my favorite game of all time. So it has to beat out my favorite franchise and my favorite game of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could already tell I'm kind of skewed to saying no. And if you saw my complaints <laughs> of Odyssey so far, you could tell. Well, right now I don't think that. Yeah, but I also have you know 150 plus hours in. Um, I've completed the main quest uh, one time in regular mode. Now I'm replaying it in 100 percent of the game in master mode. Um, and I'm not even done with that. So, like, it might not even be fair for me to really compare until um, I 100%. <laughs> but uh, there you go. It, it's still one of those things that uh, when I get at least what I feel is as far in Odyssey as I am into Breath of the Wild, um, I feel like that's when I can have that conversation. And hopefully that will be when we're talking about our final impressions because I know there's going to be a lot of you guys out there know my affinity for Breath of the Wild. I'm, I'm repeating it now. Um, and you're going to wonder, you know, how do I think they stack up despite my obvious bias towards the Zelda series. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We're not there yet. Hopefully within a couple of weeks, um, I'll, I'll be there. Um, one thing I will say in terms of rushing through the game, um, I'm not rushing through it in that I'm spending every waking moment I have doing it. Um, I'm t- this is the most taking my time I've ever done to rush through it because... Um, when I said it earlier, I cried when I first started playing. It's because when you're about to play something special, you're never going to get that first experience again. So I'm kind of savoring it. Mm. Well, even though I know I'm rushing through kind of right now, I'm savoring every time I play it. So I, I'm spacing it out on purpose because I don't want it to end. Because I don't know when we're ever going to get another Mario like this. Great. So just like I don't know if we're going to get another open world Zelda exactly like Breath of the Wild again. But I'm not done with Breath of the Wild. No. So, we'll see. Um, moving on to our next topic. Uh, Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey have set some pretty high bars. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Two ninety-seven overall rated games plus um, most uh, aggregated scoring sites, Metacritic, OpenCritic, uh, game rankings. 
uh, widely widely considered or widely rated as two of the best games ever made in the history of all gaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. think it's ever happened on a single platform in one year. Uh, maybe it has. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But after looking at all the rankings, I don't think any of those games came out in the same year. Um, so insane. And, we, and last week we talked about how those rankings uh, kind of potentially helped the Switch have the best launch year so far. Mm -hmm. Uh, at least of a Nintendo platform, if not all of all platforms. Well, now let me need to think about the future, the future of switch and the future games coming to switch and have to wonder, did did breath of the wild super Mario odyssey set impossible to reach bars for games like Pokemon on switch Metroid prime four Xenoblade two coming out in December, um, pretty much any other exclusive game uh, that looks like a top tier premium product. So, well, you might be really, really excited for Yoshi and Kirby. I think uh, based on the style of those games, I don't think we think feel like those are going to hold up necessarily to an Odyssey or Breath of the Wild. But Metroid Prime 4, mm-hmm. Pokemon, Xenoblade 2. I mean, we're talking about some pretty huge franchises here. Has Breath of the Wild Mar- Mario Odyssey set the bar way too high? Because remember, this is just year one. How many mm-hmm. more years of Switch are there? <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yeah, just this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, it feels like that with with the the NES Classic and the SNES Classic, you know, right. just uh, not just this year. It's a limited sale. <laughs> so, Eric, is the bar too high? Uh, do, do these other games need to strive to even reach I, those uh, those heights? Uh, to be completely honest, I, I think the only thing that's actually probably going to come close to this is going to be Pokemon. I, I think the other franchises aren't as large as those three. Well, well, so yeah, when I'm talking about the bar, I'm talking about the quality of the game. Right. So I'm not, not, not necessarily about the popularity. Right. Mm. Pokemon's clearly like shatters even Zelda for popularity. So. Right. It <sighs> probably shatters most Mario games to be honest too. Yeah, most. At this point. Most. Yeah. Not, I mean, obviously the original Mario sold 40 million and obviously new Super Mario was be 20 million, blah, blah, blah. But, um, it, I don't know. It, it does set a high bar because to have two of the best games in really long lasting franchises and very, very popular franchises, it, you know, to, that means basically you're going to have to have the best games out of all these franchises in order to even be remotely considered close to this. So, he, it might be an impossible bar to reach. So okay. uh, that's kind of where I'm thinking. No, I, I, I hear you on that. Um, I got some additional thoughts on that, but I want to, I want to shoot over to five J here. Um, sure. You know, I, I, is the bar too high? Um, I mean, if we're just talking in terms of quality, uh, that's, that's tough because when we're talking about Metroid and we're talking about played, these are games that aren't made by Nintendo proper. Well, I guess we don't know about Metroid Prime 4. Metroid well, we Prime 4 is isn't. headed up by the guy who created Metroid. So, and he still works at Nintendo. It's a okay, new so team. It's, it's not made we, by Retro or whatever this time. It's now in-house. Yeah, but we don't... Well, maybe. We don't know. They said it's may, being made okay. by a new team See, that's, that's not Retro. Kind of the, it's headed up by... the. Don't know. Yeah, I don't know. The only thing we know is it's headed up by Nintendo's guy. Right, and new team is very vague. Could yeah, mean very vague. a team like, that's never worked on Metroid team. before. Mm-hmm. but yeah. they may be the most veteran team of Nintendo. Well, yeah. you know I, mean? I mean, like Splatoon it, it was made by a new team um, and it was a team that no one knew existed until Splatoon came out. Mm. Uh, sure. And then arms was made by a Mario Kart 8 team. So, so what, what um, team are they talking about? I think Pokemon stands a real chance um, quality wise. If, uh, if they're going to go HD, um, then they know they have to do it well because they have to make an engine that's going to be good enough to stand you know probably three four five releases of games and uh if they come out of the gate with something subpar they know that it's going to be subpar for the rest of those releases unless they you know start over or whatnot um metroid prime quality wise boy we'll see uh the new team thing is a little scary but uh metroid prime the first one is always considered one of the best games of all time it's a good foundation to start from um the question is will there be enough fresh new stuff for it to be 
something that stands out above Metroid Prime. That's that's another tough feat. So, um, yeah, but I feel like Nintendo does this sort of things to themselves over and over again. So, is it impossible? I don't think it's impossible. Is it going to be very difficult? Yeah, it's going to be pretty darn difficult. Uh, I don't know if Metroid Prime or Pokemon will per se uh, knock them down, you know, be better quality-wise, but could they be darn close? Yeah, I think they could be really darn close. Maybe we will see some more games that are going to enter that upper echelon of, of top games of all time on this platform. They're really looking to make a lot of home runs here, so I know they're going to try their hardest, especially with their own IPs. They're going to put in every ounce of effort they can. So there's a chance. Uh, I don't know if I'd say it's likely, but there's a chance. Yeah, this is it's tough because last week we were talking about how like this might be the best launch year for a platform ever, at least in terms of exclusive games and blah, blah, blah. Um, the bar is really high. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Nintendo's ever set the bar this high ever in the history of the company for a first year where... You start the platform with one of the best games ever made. You end, well, it's not really ending because it goes until March, but you're ending the holiday season close. Yeah. with, you know, like one of the best games ever made. And then in between, you released a bunch of games that were just really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, in the 80 plus reviewed, like I think all the Switch exclusives are like mm-hmm. the highest rated exclusives in year one uh, for any platform. So and that's not just counting Breath of the Wild. That's like counting the Splatoons and the mm-hmm. arms, you know, in there and, and snipper clips even and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. uh, Golf Story got really high reviews. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so yeah, it is a PC release, though. It's my, my I guess my, my whole concern with this topic is obviously if Nintendo's peaking now, that means that the, it can only go down from here. Then up. Yeah. Um, and, and that's that obviously a concern, I think. I think any reasonable fan, uh, I'm not trying to kill your hype. I'm, I'm hyped as hell for a lot of these games. But, you know, it, it's one of those you have to wonder, Pokemon's going to drive sales. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not talking about games that could drive sales and, and keep Switches moving. Switch is going to keep selling for a long time. Um, Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, even though I'm not technically 100% done with either of them, I know I could tell already they're evergreen titles. They're going to keep selling. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So... The platform's going to stay relevant. Still going to like this isn't about success of the platform, but if you're peaking in terms of the quality of your games now, uh, it, it to me it's going to be, um, it might almost feel like a letdown in years after. Not uh, some of you guys are hardcore Metroid fans, hardcore Pokemon fans. Obviously, you might not feel a letdown, uh, but I'm not talking okay. about like the extreme fans on either medium. I'm talking about the general perception of the game library, mm-hmm. um, and Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey. I think they did set an impossible bar. There's no way in hell Nintendo's going to release two games in the same year for the rest of the lifetime of the Switch and have them both be rated as two of the top games ever. And on top of that, have three, four, five other games come out rated in the mid-80s. Hmm. It's just not going to happen. I don't even know if they can maintain the current pace of releases, let alone... If you're talking about a whole year, yeah, yeah. that's tough. I thought you were talking about individual games. Well, yeah, no, individual games. Like, like, it is individual games, but... It- <laughs> Like, well, when I just look at the base conversation, like Pokemon on Switch, you, know, you guys talked about how Pokemon on Switch has the best chance of potentially um, hitting that level. And mm-hmm. I wonder if people just think that because of how popular it is, because they actually have HD assets made in the past for prior games that just never used. Um, this is this comes from like developer interviews and stuff. Uh, so you wonder, especially uh, when we're hearing or I've had rumors that potentially the game might be coming out next year. You know, they put that in their financial update. They they have 2018 or later listed on it, whereas uh, <laughs> Metro Prime 4 is TBD. So that means that there is a chance, at least, that Pokemon can land next year. And when you think about that, if they just did Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon, uh, that means that there are two, maybe two and a half years of development on it. To me, that doesn't sound like they're revolutionizing anything. They could just be making a normal Pokemon game with HD assets. Um, yeah, that'd be that'd be bad. Especially when, yeah, that's like true. They, they said, their veteran team is working on it. Well, their veteran team has only ever made Pokemon a certain way. <laughs> so how do I trust the veteran team who's yeah. always done it one way 
to reinvent it. Now, that doesn't mean they can't. Right. It obviously happens, but like Breath of the Wild, as an example, that reinvented the wheel or at least incorporated the entirety of the series into that wheel, uh, a lot of the ideas that went into that were from the new staff members. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's just a really interesting thing. When And this isn't to like discredit the director or E.J. Noma or anything. Like Obviously, they play pivotal roles as well. But, I mean, E.J. Nobles came right out and said a lot of these things, like all these things we did at the physics center, like this was from the new people. Um, this wasn't like my ideas. This was their ideas. And I just thought they were great. Um, and I don't know how much that's true with Odyssey or not. Hasn't been out as long. We don't have as many interviews about it. So we don't know the full development process behind Odyssey yet. But I, I, mm-hmm. I do wonder if Pokemon, we just think it might be because it's going to sell a ton. It might be the best-selling game on Switch mm-hmm. when all is said yeah, and done. Possibly. Because um, that's just Should how big Pokemon is. No. Pokemon is such, like, it, sales-wise, Pokemon is every every release. Like, every mainline Pokemon release is in a tier of its own because every mainline Mario yeah. release doesn't always sell tens of millions of copies. Right. Every mainline Pokemon game has. Yeah, I think the lowest uh, main entry Line, uh, Pokemon game is sold like the lowest was like 16 million. <laughs> sure. And like, uh, like in a big teller is, for this as well is, Oh, are, are they going to keep to the traditional? There's going to be two Pokemon games. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Yeah. Probably you know, $60 a pop, two Pokemon games. And if they're doing that, that tells me, well, you're not really breaking away from the formula at all. Then mm-hmm. still have to buy two Pokemon games. So same stories, with slightly different Pokemon, blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, it, it's, I don't know. It, it, I'm not saying that it can't happen. We know nothing about the game, right? So, like, all we can do is look at history and say, okay, what have they done before? That makes us confident they can reinvent the wheel now. Right. Because what well, was the last time Pokemon has really reinvented the wheel? When they got rid of badges? Um, well, I don't know that, that Mario Odyssey completely reinvents a wheel either. Like you said, no. this is Mario 64. Yeah. So yeah. I don't I don't know if they have to reinvent the entire Pokemon uh, formula in order for it to be a really, really, really amazing Pokemon game that's the best in its series. Well, but, I mean, this is what we're talking about, right? We're talking about two games that are not only, like, super, super high rated, widely considered to be among or if not the best in the series. Mm-hmm. And so for a Pokemon game to me to do that, uh, it almost has to be fresh in my, in my opinion, because they've been using the same formula over and well, over. Well, there's over one thing that they refuse to go back to that if they did would have a ginormous effect on yeah, all the Pokemon it. fans of the years. Go on. Do you know what it is, Nate? Go ahead. I, I have a strong feeling. Uh, it's, uh, how about you travel to more than one region, mm-hmm. gold and silver, baby. When they went back to yep. the original Kanto region, after you complete the game, that they've never nice. done it again. Yep. And it's a great idea. Why not give us a, a much more connected go from region to region to region Pokemon? I mean, if I, okay. you know, when you say that, I think, um, this would be a revolutionary thing. If they, the first Pokemon mm-hmm. game on switch, all the lands are, are there. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. So fans of every single generation, just like, I mean, if you think about mm-hmm. it, even Odyssey, just, we say Mario 64, but there's so many oh, callbacks yeah, no, no, to sure. all the games. Mm-hmm. Um, and they did that in Breath of the Wild as well. Yeah. It's actually like one consistent thing between both of them, callbacks to like every game mm-hmm. in the series. Yep. Respect for the roots. Yes. So in a way, Pokemon can pull that off by just including every single region. Yeah. Be a lot, It'd be a lot of regions. Game. It'd be, it'd be intense, regions. but it's not like they can't do it. But you know, the, the Kanto that was in the gold and silver was also slightly truncated. It wasn't sure. one-to-one in size, so they could sure. do something similar to that. Right. They could. Yeah. I mean, my dream is open world, so we're not yes. going to get an open world Pokemon <laughs> game, but <laughs> that's, that's my dream. Off, I, think. That would I, I, I would love an open world Pokemon game that's like World of Warcraft, and you can explore all the territories fully. Uh, yeah. It would just be intense, and to me, it's so the the only way it logically makes sense to catch all seven hundred and sixty one or however many Pokemon there are oh, is yeah, being able to go to the regions had. where they came from. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Man, it would be intense. I mean, my ultimate dream is a Pokemon MMO game, but let's just be real; that's not going to happen. Or maybe it is. It wouldn't maybe be Nintendo's going to launch their online system with Pokemon MMO. Hey, I don't there know. There you go. Uh, maybe that's why they say twenty eighteen or later, and they're just teasing. Oh, by the way, that's also for our online system twenty eighteen or later. <laughs> true story um, yeah because they're going to want to trade online and battle online you know metroid prime 4 
It's a new team. So the last time that Metroid was at its peak was when it was with a new team. Yep. Uh, Retro Studios' very first game, Metroid Prime 1, is widely considered the best of the three Metroid Primes. And Metroid Prime is considered to be uh, the best Metroid game, uh, if not the... If not the best, the number two behind Super Metroid, uh, for people who really, really, really just love that that two D um, side scrolling Metroid style, uh, just like mm-hmm. with Zelda, for, you know, it basically for a long time it was Ocarina of Time is widely considered number one, and then if that's not your number one, it's probably a link to the past. Yeah. Um, and granted, I, I was never one of those people for either of those games, but that was <laughs> the general Ooh. opinion. There's always exceptions to the rules. Yep. Um. So I think it has a shot because it's a new team. But then when you hear like the same guys in charge of it that made other M happen, it's like, does that guy really have it anymore? Yeah. Even yeah. though it's his baby, that, that does he have the good ideas anymore? Or is it a new team of younger developers uh, that Nintendo's like, look, what our young developers have been successful with, you need to let them get their ideas in. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Because they grew up. These aren't people that necessarily you know, made these games in the past, but they grew up playing them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's an advantage to grow up playing them where you're like, okay, they know what they like in Metroid prime. So they're going to make sure that's there and then add on top. Mm -hmm. It's actually ironically what I want Nintendo to do as a company (laughs) with the online system, give us what is standard and then do your new ideas on top of it. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's really what I feel like they've done with breath of the wild and Mario Odyssey. Really? They gave us, uh, what we want in terms of the standard features, and mm-hmm. then they built everything, all these new ideas around it. Um, so it's weird they're doing that with their software. They don't always do that with their hardware, but good different conversation. Some people are like rolling their eyes now that I even mentioned that. Um, <laughs> and then there's Xenoblade Two. None of us brought that up. Um, yeah, there's not a prayer. I think. <laughs> well, I mean, not a prayer in what way? Like it can't be the best Xenoblade Say, game. Definitely ever not sales. There's only two that's, other games. That's for sure. Um, I mean, that's, that is a fair point. Um, actually that's a, that's a really good point because there was one thing that held the original Xenoblade Blade Chronicles back, which was the lack of power in the system. And so a lot of, a lot of ugly textures and stuff in that game. But, um, what was amazing is the scale of the world and the, um, uh, but what's making me nervous about Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and I don't know if we're sort of morphing into another topic here by talking about this. Wow, you but caught it's, on. Sorry, what? You, you caught on, because our next topic's about Xenoblade, so... Nay. Um, so, what I've seen of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 in, in the advertisement so far, it looks a little bit more like Odyssey, in that it's like a bunch of smaller kingdoms. Instead of like a giant connected world, which is Xenoblade Chronicles and Chronicles X both had that. Yep. So if it's a bunch of smaller connected worlds, I don't know if it's going to be able to um, blow it out of the water to to expand on what Xenoblade Chronicles 1 did and do it better. Um, maybe there's more content. Maybe there's more variety. Maybe that's great. Um but I'm a little bit nervous from what I've seen so far. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, is I think out of all of the games, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, at least in terms of poten- a, a potential to be the best in the franchise, has the easiest chance because there's the least sure. amount of games to compare to. Yep. Uh, so, you know, if you didn't like X style and you like the original Xenoblade style, you're probably going to like Xenoblade 2 better than X already. And then the question will be, you know, do you like... Xenoblade Chronicles 2 better than the original Xenoblade Chronicles. Um, mm-hmm. And then, obviously, you know, on the counter to that, oh, did you like the more Western style X versus the original one? Then you're probably going to like X better than 2, anyways. Yeah. Um, so there's obviously some subjectiveness in there, but, you know, review scores also help pan that out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it could become the highest reviewed Xenoblade game. I don't even know what the highest reviewed one is off the top of my head. I should have looked that up before we started, but. Yeah, I don't know. I would um, assume it would be the first one. Honestly. Maybe. I mean, X was reviewing well, too, at, at first. I, I don't know. It's a great game. You no, know, I love them both. Yeah. I, I don't know what, what they ended with. Uh, it, it's, but I mean, it, you know, when we talk about the bar being set, obviously the bar of ooh, one of the greatest games ever made, I don't think could be matched. I mean, I, I think we all hope that happens. We all hope that, yeah. like, Metroid Prime 4, Pokemon, Xenoblade, mm-hmm. uh, Kirby, Yoshi, whatever. 
uh, yeah. Smash. Whatever game comes out could be rated as like the one of the greatest games ever made. Uh, yeah. It feels like if you look at the greatest games ever made, the only games that have a shot are Mario and Zelda out of Nintendo's library anyways. Um, because if you look yeah. at all the top rated games, it's all Mario, Zelda, and then, you know, games from other companies. Um, very few other Nintendo franchises even score above 90s at times. Uh, so if I look at it from that perspective, I don't think any other franchise realistically has a chance. But in terms of potential to be the best in the franchise, mm-hmm. uh, like Odyssey and Breath of the Wild might be and is for some people, uh, Pokemon is going to have a shot because it's the first HD game in the series. The first traditional home console game. It, it, so you can put this in perspective. This is the leap all the games took back on the N64 mm. that people are expecting here. Um, so that's why so many of us like, you can't screw this up. This is the N64 leap for the Pokemon franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it's really weird to have a franchise in 2017 and 2018 that hasn't made that leap yet. Yeah. Uh, but Pokemon's <laughs> one of them. Uh, there's been obviously 3D Pokemon games, but uh, even 2.5D and, and arguably 3D on the handhelds, but nothing like what people are going to expect on Switch. So that yeah. has a chance just because there's going to be that wow factor of yeah. collecting all these Pokemon in HD. Yeah. I think the only Pokemon games that were on Wii U, the other age console, was like Pokemon Rumble. You and know, and not, Pokemon Tournament. Not going for high fidelity graphics, these little cutesy toys. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a uh, pocket tournament or whatever poking tournament. Oh yeah, that's fair. I and that, that looked one. really Great. good. But again, that's a, a fighting game. So it's not really the same thing. Yeah. Plus there were only like a dozen Pokemon in it out of the 700 yeah. plus. So, um, granted, they, I thought I actually felt they had a good choice of Pokemon in there, but they did. Um, they did, but obviously it's like Prime. 1% of all Pokemon. Mm. <laughs> the nice thing about Pokemon to switch is it can break free from the bonds of all prior games while still calling back to it. I feel like that's what Breath of the Wild and Odyssey did. Mm. It broke free from the bonds the series has been stuck in for a while, mm. but called back to everything at the same time, which right. was brilliant. I think Pokemon mm-hmm. and Switch could do that. I don't know if they're going to. I'm not I have zero faith that's what they're going to do. Yeah. But they could. I think the potential is there. And I think they know the especially after Pokemon Go and everything, they know that okay. Yeah. We we have to get this right because this could be it's not gonna be Pokemon Go levels of revenue, but it, it could be potentially the best selling Pokemon game ever if oh for sure they get it right. Um, so I think they mm-hmm. want to get it right. We'll see. Um, maybe it will be ready in twenty eighteen. Maybe for all we know, they've been working on this before they even started development on Sun and Moon. Um, you know, we really don't know how long this has been in development for. Didn't seem like it, honestly. It, it seemed did, like it they did. were you like we would have saw their pants down. Something. Oh. We would, yeah. you, you figure we would have saw, even if it was like a CGI um, anime thing when they announced it. Or Instead of like a casual logo, mention, oh, like by the way, we're working four. on a new Pokemon game for Switch. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Metroid weird. Prime 4 is always going to have the issue of that's the one that, how do you break free from Prime by being a Prime game? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be called Prime Four. First of all, I think they gotta kind of start over. I don't think they're. I don't think they're going to start over. And I'll. Not, and the only reason I say that. Say, but I don't think it's been called I, Four. I, I think the only reason I could say that. Well, I don't know. It, it might be called Metroid Prime with a subtitle. I don't know. But yeah, I don't it, think Four is gonna be in the title. Maybe I don't see. All the other ones had had the number in the title besides the first, of course. Um, I understand. So, I think because of how. The hardcore Metroid fan base was going nuts when that just having that title on mm-hmm. screen. Yeah, I, I don't think they're going to get rid of that title. Right. Um, they might add a subtitle to it, but very clearly they built this hype on being the next Metroid Prime. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, for them to like e- even get rid of the number or get rid of the Prime in it would almost might actually turn some people off. Being like, ah, oh, you promised a Prime game and now you're not giving us a Prime game. Right. It'll be a sequel to Prime Three. I'm just yeah. predicting we're not going <laughs> to see a four in the title. Predicting. Get, lock in that bet. <laughs> I'm locking it in there. Locking it in. Uh, I think they're going to keep the Metro Prime 4 just because people would not. So I think they'll add a subtitle. Um, But I think they're going to. I mean, they might even shorten it. They might even say Metro Prime. They might just call it MP4, then subtitle. Um, Which would be interesting. I don't, think, I don't know if they've ever done that. I don't know. Um, Which clearly means Metro Prime, but, you know, to, to make it shorter if they have a really long subtitle. Yeah. I think Zelda always has The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. I mean, that's yeah. a mouthful. Yeah. Um, but nobody calls it the Legend of Zelda. They call it Breath of the Wild. So, 
Um, what they call it, Metro Prime 4, or what they call it, the subtitle? Yeah. Um, don't know, I guess. Um, but I think we'll that's see. the game that has the least chance of standing out just because it's going to be a Prime game, which means it's going to be built off of what they've already done with the Prime series instead of necessarily being a, a new start for the franchise. Um, Odyssey felt refreshing because it felt like almost kind of a new start. Uh, Breath of the Wild definitely felt like a new start. Uh, Pokemon and Switch can feel like a new start. Metroid Prime 4 or Metroid Prime whatever it's called, it, by nature of being a sequel, mm-hmm. I just don't think it, it can have that. It, it could still be really damn know. good. It could end up because being the best Metroid Prime game. I don't know. Metroid Fusion yeah. was technically Metroid 4, right? Not Prime, right. but Metroid 4. Yeah, yeah. And they did something very new in that one. Um, and based on the way Prime 3 ended... I think there's plenty of space for them to really put a twist on the formula. Oh, no doubt. But it's still going to be built off of what Prime set up instead mm-hmm. of being something mm-hmm. completely fresh. Yeah. Um, and, I, and to be fair, they did try something fresh with other M. Um, I, I can't take away their attempt at it. Um, combining Metroid Prime with like side scrolling Metroid, they tried it. <laughs> They, they basically they tried, tried to pull it. an Odyssey. They, they they tried to pull an Odyssey. They really yeah, they did. did. <laughs> they really did. It, it didn't work. At least, I, the thing is, I like other than I actually think it's a lot better than people give it credit for. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the, some of the monotone voice acting really turns people off. Um, but the more and more people said that, and the more and more of this, I'm like, that's what I don't really know what I expect Metro, like Samus to sound like. Yeah. After all the crap she's been through, is she supposed to get super ultra excited about things? Like a little schoolgirl, is she supposed to get like super ultra serious, or is she just dead inside at this point? Yeah. After everything she's gone through in the series, I I'd be dead inside. Yeah. You know she's gone through a lot of crap. If you know the history of the Metroid series, man, Samus, like I don't know how she can even have a soul anymore at this point. Um, she. Yeah, I also don't know why she's always alone. It's like the Federation's everywhere. Yeah. Appeared in like a couple of games. Yep. Yeah, maybe we should try and help her out there. She's all destroying literally hundreds of aliens single handedly. Maybe we'll throw a trooper in here. Or she's, there. she's a badass. <laughs> they just be like, why risk our troops who can barely take out one guy when she's just going to go wipe out the whole nation? Why train more troops to actually be able to shoot well? Nah. nah. Go They've, ahead, seen Halo. They've seen Halo. God. But yeah, uh, I, I think Metroid's just gonna have the hardest time, just because the expectations are almost more of the same. Um, you know, better but more of the same, and they might blow us out of the water. It, it could happen. I, by the way, I'm not saying none of this can happen. I think Metroid Prime Four, out of all of them, has the least ch- amount of chance because it, it can't really reset. The, I mean, even in Xenoblade Two, you mentioned you know they've really separated up the world. It seems between the different giants. Um, and that's just a different. So it's, it's a different take. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. they could do that with Xenoblade because every single Xenoblade game has been a different take. Uh, there hasn't been two Xenoblade games that are the same. Uh, so out of the two that are already out, <laughs> yeah, of, of yeah. The, that's what I'm saying though. Like it's so that 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 series has the advantage of youth, right? So like mm-hmm. when Zelda came out, Zelda one and Zelda two, very very different. Oh my goodness, yeah. Um, so Maybe. like when a link to the past came out, it's like oh okay, combine the best elements of both, sweet. Um, Whereas, uh, is that what they're going to do with Xenoblade 2? We don't know. But they could. And it's a it's a young enough franchise that that could happen. Metroid yeah. is an old franchise. Metroid Prime is a, now <laughs> almost a classic series at this point. Uh, yeah, where, you know, several yes. generations ago. Yeah, so it's... I think Metroid is going to struggle the most just because it is the only one of them that is built off of as a direct sequel to... And I understand Xenoblade 2 is supposedly a sequel to Xenoblade 1. Um but done in a way that's almost, it feels Breath of the Wild like, where Breath of the Wild is a sequel to like, you know, from games from 10,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. But um, it's still its own thing. Uh, Metro Prime, I think, is going to struggle with that perception. But it can still be excellent. It can still end up being the best Prime game ever. Who knows? Um, I'll be right back. Of course, you're going to be right back. You can start the next topic. Obviously, even though you were supposed to start the next I topic. Know, but- <laughs> abandoning the plan okay uh so move, moving on while, while eric's clearing his throat um 
<laughs> doing a lot of talk about Xenoblade Chronicles. And also, you guys, like, let us know down in the comments below about, you know, do you think, you know, these games can match Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild? And very, like, we talked about several different aspects um, that you could try right. to measure the games to those two games. Or do you think we shouldn't even be measuring them at all? That you can't do that, right? Um, I, I think it was very fair to say, all right, what if we're just talking about best inside the series? That's yeah. probably the most objective way to talk about it. Yeah. And I think we kind of edged on that. So I, I think that was, I think we, I like that we looked at multiple sides. We'll, we'll see <laughs> what, how people respond to that.